Before this video starts, I would just like to mention that I've opened a new Discord server. It'll be the first link in the description. I'll put it in the comments as well. Make sure you join if you need any scripting tutorial help, and I hope you enjoy this Roblox scripting advanced tutorial. Before we get into this video, I'd like you to consider this problem. Imagine we had five points on the screen. Each of the five points represent a city. This includes London, Paris, Prague, Berlin, and Madrid, maybe. The problem states, what are the total number of tours you can have between these five cities and end back at the start? So, for example, if I start at London, what are all possible tours I could have and then return back to London? So to find the solution to this problem, let's take n as five, where n is the number of cities, and we can calculate the number of tours total like this. So we start at London and we check every other possible route that we can take from London and these are shown with the green lines. Now the number of traversals we can make here is n minus 1 where n is 5 and the number of routes are 4 aka the number of green lines. So we add that to our total calculation at the bottom. We then move to the most suitable one which the next one would be Paris and we calculate the total number of tours from Paris and we exclude London because we've already visited the node. Now the number of traversals here will be n minus 2 or 3 traversals. So we multiply our first set of traversals by our second set which is the n minus 2. We then move to the next suitable place which would be Prague and we repeat the same process. We'd have n minus 3 traversals and we multiply the number of tours by n minus 3. We'd move to Berlin and have the same n minus 4 traversals multiply that by n minus 4 because there's only one traversal left and once we've reached Madrid we can go back to the start and we've calculated the total number of tours that we can take from London and then back to London again at the end. Now this number of tours formula here can be simplified to n minus 1 factorial and if you don't know what factorials are let's say you had 4 factorial, then it would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So if n equals 5, then we have 4 factorial tours that the user could take. However, if n is 100, then we have 99 factorial tours. Now, why am I showing you this problem before we get in this Roblox Studio tutorial? Well, let's say we want to program this algorithm and find the total number of tours between 100 cities. 99 factorial tours is approximately this number on the screen. And this number is way too big to comprehend. Therefore, programming this in Roblox Studio or any sort of programming platform would be barely possible. You would not be able to look through this many tours and figure out which one is the best. And this problem is called the traveling salesman problem. The problem states that it wants to visit every single node the quickest and shortest time and return to the start node. For our example, this may have been the quickest route. It might have been a different route, but the problem states that it wants to find the quickest. And the method we just went through was the brute force method, where you find every single solution and then you find the shortest path. However, as you can see, this takes way too much time to compute, which is why the problem is deemed at the moment unsolvable. But why does this matter? But all your programs in Roblox Studio will take time. And by time, in Roblox Studio, we can call it a unit of time. We don't mean seconds on the clock, we mean the unit of time it takes to complete one line of code or one operand. And in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to time complexity in Roblox Studio. Now, this is really, really important for making sure that your Roblox Studio scripts are as efficient as they can possibly be. Many programmers in Roblox Studio will not consider time complexity. They either just don't know what it is or they won't consider it because they think it won't matter. However, it can actually really speed up your program and your game, especially if you're using large numbers of n, such as with the traveling salesman problem. Now, the first question you're probably asking is what is time complexity? And time complexity is just the measure of time that it will take to complete your program or function. And we denote time complexity with three different attributes, one being omega, one being big theta, and one being big O. Now, the big omega usually relates to the lower bound. The big theta is usually the average case time complexity, the most precise of all of them, and big O which you might have heard of before, you might not have, is the upper bound time complexity, the most time that it will take to complete your algorithm. Now, different algorithms and different structures will have different time complexity. For example, if you take these two trees here, if you want to find the item at the bottom of the tree, one will have big O of log n and one will have big O of n. Now, which one is better, you might ask? Well, the whole idea of time complexity is to reduce the amount of time complexity as much as possible. So if you graph log n and n and show them increasing, the large values of n, log n is severely smaller than n. Now, basically what this means is that the log n algorithm is much more efficient than the n algorithm, therefore running faster in your Roblox Studio games. Now, another example of time complexity can come in for loops, while loops. For example, let's say we have this while loop. We want to calculate how much time does this while loop take to run. But as you can see, it loops through the array n times, and it's trying to find the element that's held in the num variable. Therefore, the maximum amount of time that it's going to take is order of n, big O of n. Now, we've got two more to calculate 
calculate here what is the average time complexity of this while loop now what we're checking for here is we're checking to see if our function lies between two bounding functions and if it lies between those two bounding functions then it is theta of that function so for our example we can take n here because we have o of n already so the formula for this is on the screen here and it looks a bit disgusting but we just need to take two constants let's say one and two so we have our one here times the n which is less than or equal to our f of n which is less than or equal to our two times n as well now if this equality holds it means that it is theta of n and in our case it does and there's no bounding equality here it holds for every value therefore we can say that our while loop is theta of n now you don't really have to worry about the theta and the omega the o is way more important and you can just focus on the big o if you don't want to focus on this however the omega is just going to be omega of one and it's going to be omega of one because the element that we're trying to find could be the first element in the array this means we could find it on the first check which means it would only take one unit of time to find that element now this bit was quite complex so if you want to go back and rewatch, do go and rewatch. i hope i explained it well but this roblox tutorial is basically telling you check your algorithms and check your time complexity in the future episodes of this series we're going to be using algorithms that use the most efficient time complexity so if you follow along with the series and subscribe you won't have to worry about doing it all yourself another place that this is really important in roblox studio algorithms is with sorting algorithms if you're sorting a list of players in a leaderboard or something using the correct algorithm that has the lowest time complexity or lowest order time complexity would be really important so choosing the best algorithm with the best running time is vital to make your roblox studio scripts really efficient now in the next few videos we'll be using algorithms that use the best time complexity and i will go over it in those videos so i just wanted to explain time complexity in this video hopefully you found this video useful and gave you an insight into what you should be looking for in your roblox studio script so if you found this useful please leave a like on this video i do appreciate the support on the videos the comment for today's video from the previous video is by speedy g a great video thanks for putting the code up every program that i use in the tutorials will be in the description in an rbxl file you can just download that and import it into roblox studio and everything should work fine for you just to double check if you've got anything wrong make sure you join the new discord server that'll be the first link in the description if you need any help with roblox scripting i'll be there to help hope you learned something from today's video and i'll see you in the next roblox studio scripting tutorial